Alright my Bertram fans, this is going to be episode 11. Can you believe we are up to episode 11 on the Bertram 31 restoration, refit, repower. Uh, this is where I was left off in episode 10. I was working on this uh, surge tube for the starboard engine. Again, it's more than just a surge tube. It is a surge tube connector with three bends and elbows and an S-turn. This is a test fit of a prop that we got our hands on. The, it's 21 inch diameter. First time we got to slip a prop in there. And you'll notice the marks on the rudder. Well, this is the template I took off the original um, strut and rudder design and then made all my measurements, modifications based on these dimensions. And if you look at that line where the shaft tip ends, I pretty much nailed my mark. Although we did offset the rudders, I for some reason thought we had more room to slide that prop off the tip of the shaft. And needless to say, we, we had to build new rudders. I ended up doing this mock-up rudder to slide the props out. I will explain in more detail where I think I got off track there and... Stop it, Marshall. Uh, and what's going on here? Stop it, Marshall. I'm sorry about that. Marshall is trying to help. Uh, this is the three quarter inch divider cell panel that will be used up in the bridge. Uh, it's the floor of the storage compartment. It looks like we're going to start up right where we left off in the last video. And that was working on this surge okay. tube for the starboard oh. engine. And yeah. I'm going to let this kind of play in real time. Fire I'll skip through the, the lifter, slow seven. parts. At about 35 measured ounces, not fluid ounces. 35 ounces on the scale and I use my fancy MEK calculator at Bernice.com slash MEK two percent is about 24 cc I went 25 cc pretty cool today do a small lamp here this stick is my my personal mixing stick can't buy that. I also reuse these cuts. Once they get a nice hard bottom in them, old surfer guys that used to laminate uh, surfboards, you should see their cups. They had cups that look, made this look brand new. Um, but anyway, I use a scale, so it doesn't matter what the cup looks like, and I'm not using the measurements on the size. I zero it out before I put any resin in it, add the resin, put it back on the scale, and that's how much I got right here. Oh, okay. Let's roll. Time intended. Ready? That's a little bit my stick. Right here. This is one ounce top strand mat. One ounce top strand mat cut into what I call. And I'm gonna wet those out. We've got some 1208 here too. Just get this on the table. Some clown tell me my roller was too big. Yeah. Said I should use a brush. Oh, that's fine. I don't think about this before I can dive right into it. What kind of point I'm going to go about it? Thank you. Pull me up on the way around like I want. Yeah. Maybe back on it. Oh, no problem. 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 Oh, Okay. Anywhere first? Okay, okay. Hold on. 
Put it up. 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 I got my four to the So this is actually a Zep bottle and it squirts acetone. For some reason, other chemicals kill these things and some last longer than others, but sometimes you'll have to replace the head. This bottle had, had acetone in it probably about six years. It's crazy. I don't even know how it was. Now one thing I do, you should see there, I drill about a sixteenth of an inch hole there. That's a vent. If you don't do that, just with the pressure changes during the day, acetone will fill up out here and they will heat up and expand and it'll spit it out the top. But anyway, this is 
you can save a whole lot of acetone. Rinse stuff down. Look how I clean my paint guns too. Don't normally do that. So sloppy, but she's already clean and sticky again. Ready for a new lamp. And cannot lie, I did almost drink acetone out of the Gatorade bottle once. I, I got it to the opening of my mouth. Realized something was wrong. After I inhaled a bunch of fumes, I never poured it in my mouth, but close enough, I, I stopped putting it in that's in Gatorade bottles after that. I said, nah, we gotta do we gotta do better. This is that surge tube all sanded down ready for a test fit while the glasswork is done and there you can see it's in its home that is a 45 degree elbow coming off the mixing can and straight into that surge tube which makes another bend and then straight up to the muffler right here and it does line up well with the muffler There's the muffler. I did have to shorten the front of it and then slip a four inch piece of four inch silicone hose on the front of that muffler, slide it through the bulkhead, attach that surge tube, and that is complete at this point until we learn about another style of exhaust riser to be continued. This is where we left this off and we got in touch with Volvo and we were able to get our hands on an IPS riser. Didn't end up working exactly for us, but gave us some ideas. These are the Tides shaft seals. I did have to cut the shaft log tubing just a tiny bit to make everything fit in there. It is a very tight fit. Slide that shaft back just to get a wrench in there, pull the, the nut off the shaft. It's very tight with the shaft seals and all the part, all the components that need to be in there. And here, man, did we open a can of worms here. These are the original engine covers and that corner missing, I've always wanted to correct. That's a, it was cut off for the previous owner with where there was a clearance issue with the tower. I uh, will just leave it at that. Um, but. I decided I was going to correct a lot of issues with the top of those engine covers. While we were at it, we were going to address a clearance issue here. We weren't actually touching, but that nipple that sticks off of that oil separator, the black canister right there, that nipple would probably make contact at startup and shutdown or a high torque situation with a bounce. It may bump onto the, the box had we done nothing. So here's what I think happened. This is a 19 inch prop. Originally we were calling it a 20, but after we measured it and checked it, it turns out it was only 19. And the hub length on a 19 inch prop is much different than the hub length on a 21 inch prop. You can see this goes on and off. I got one hand on that prop and I'm sliding it on and off with two and a quarter inch in between the shaft and the rudder. And I believe I burned that number into my brain and said, well, if we've got two and a quarter inches in between the tip of the shaft and the rudder, which you can see we, we clearly have here on this template, we got no problem. But the hub on a 21 inch prop is actually four and a quarter to four and five eighths. That's a big difference. Even though we did offset the rudders, uh, we should have had more clearance, a little bit more wiggle room getting that prop in and out it, it wasn't enough and I guess I never went back and just double checked that number it was gold in my mind it was set in stone I do take responsibility that that was an error I, I made a mistake on that I, I should have had some way of going back and double checking or checking with a, another uh, a full-size uh, hub but either way that's what I think went wrong so here we are correcting the problem. We have a 21 inch prop on there. Our struts are in, we're recessed. Uh, we're looking at modifying the rudders we have. 
and what would be required there. And for shits and giggles, I built a wooden mock-up. If we could build the perfect rudder at this point, what would it look like? This is actually more surface area than the original rudders that we considered modifying. And if you look at the top, this uh, I'm actually pretty excited about this. I added quite a bit of a wedge to the top. So when this rudder is turned over hard inboard like this, there's much more water directed from that prop, much more water flow directed. I've, I've thought about it a lot. You would never really, really need good tight steering for maneuvering up to a dock. But in an emergency situation, like, holy shit, like we need to turn this boat around and go the other direction. If there was something happened where you needed to spin the boat around quickly while still pushing forward, that may benefit us. And so I'm, I'm, I'm happy to see that we did go that direction. I'm very excited to see how that actually works in, in the water. And now we are looking at three quarter inch to cell. This panel was laid up on the other side, then flipped over on a two by four. We're using a two by four to bow the middle. And I've got these one gallon cans setting on the, the excess fiberglass holding the corners down. I primed it and what you're looking at is this panel soaked up a ton of resin before I did the skin coat. And I kept mixing a pint and I put it on and I mix another pint, add it to it, mix another pint. I'm like, holy shit, this thing's just soaking up resin. My point there is that I don't know a lot of people that actually prime their foam like this before they start a layup. They probably just throw some fiberglass on it and wet through 1708. And I don't think they ever really get a good bond. I think that resin soaks into that foam regardless of what kind of foam it is, some of, some of the resin does soak into the foam. And, and in this instance, it was quite a bit. And at some point, I do lay this side up. It gets a 1708 and a one ounce chopped grain mat over top. These are the Tides upper rudder bearing seals. And this is a, man, I can't remember the name of that. A very nice steering cylinder. Uh, it's high pressure. I think the operating pressure on that thing is 3,000 PSI. Something crazy. Um, I could be wrong. And that's just showing the, the seals installed um, with the underwater lights. And this is the holding tank temporary mold. One-off mold. If you watch my shorts, you've already seen this thing built. And... Up in episode 12, we'll finish up those engine boxes. And I appreciate y'all. And if you like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel, maybe share with a friend, and I'll keep doing it. Thank you.